want to start with this word, yeah. citizen. Yeah. And we've both been doing work around tapping into the power of the people, the power within people. Yeah. And context for me is that I've been co-creator and producer and and partial voice of this media movement called How to Citizen. Yes, you have. Where we take citizen to be a verb. It's something you do. And there are four basic principles behind it. To citizen is to show up and assume you have a role to play. To citizen is to understand power Mm -hmm. and be literate in it, as Eric Liu would say. To citizen is to commit to the collective self, not just the individual self. Yes. And thus we can still be selfish. (laughs) We just have to expand the self circle. Yes. Uh, And finally, to citizen is to invest in relationships with yourself, with others, and with the planet around us, because there's no separation among all those things. And, and for us, and for me, this was born in part out of a, a lack of invitation to do more mm. on the part of the people. Mm-hmm. Give me your money, vote for me, and it kind of stopped there. Mm-hmm. How do you think about this word citizen, what it means or what it can mean? Mm. First of all, I really like four pillars. I mean, I really like when there's like a clear lineup. I'm not going to give you that. I, <laughs> I love it. That's why we have different people on the that's stage. Why, that's why I love yes. it. So for me, I think of the word fractal. You know, mm. a few years ago, I got deep into emergent science, complexity sciences, and because I wanted to understand how does everything in the world actually work? <laughs> and everything works that's through all? changing. I just wanted to understand everything. <laughs> everything, cool, and cool. And I was like... Change is constant, change is inevitable. And so it means every species that survives on Earth gets in right relationship with change. And then inside of that, it's about being a fractal of something larger than yourself. Mm. So fractal is the fact that things go to the very smallest scale and up to the largest scale, and you can see the repetition, you can see the the self-same structure, broccoli, ferns, dandelions, you know, looking at a delta and looking at our lungs, right? You can see that these patterns repeat. So to me, citizen is being a fractal of belonging to this species, right? Mm. And I don't think of it as nation. I I think of myself as a post-nationalist because we have these larger concerns than just what's within a border. But so far, humans have said within each border, now we're going to try to operate a certain way. So for me, I'm like, how am I a fractal of belonging? How do I belong to the land, to myself, to community? Mm -hmm. How am I a fractal of justice inside of my community or a fractal of the future that I really want to see come into being, right? Um, And so that's how I live my life every day. I'm like, maybe we don't live in the world that I envision, the world that feels just to me yet, but I can be a fractal of that world now. Yeah, That's to me what a citizen is. Be a fractal. Mm -hmm. The idea of change is a really important one. And I Mm -hmm. think that change is inevitable and accelerating. And so we are living in this confluence of many changes at once. The climate is changing, the economics are changing, the technology that allows us to relate or not is changing pretty constantly. So we've got to find something else to hold (laughs) on to amidst Uh that change. Uh, I propose each other as an answer to what we could rely on uh, when everything else seems to be undergoing change. There's a series of questions that we could be asking ourselves Mm -hmm. in this time about what are other ways we can process, talk about, think about citizening as a verb. What are some of the questions you're carrying? Well, I mean, we've got some problems. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest ones for me is how frequently we see people wanting one thing and the government doing something else. And this is in places that are supposed to be democratic, evolved, we're representational governments, right? And it hasn't, it's not new, right? It seems to be like a very old problem and Mm -hmm. we've seen the cycle happen over and over again. So, you know, we can say it's a climate change, I call it a climate catastrophe. I'm like, we're past the time when we need to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Changes are now turning into something catastrophic. We're in a period of war. We're in a period of genocide. We're in a period of harmful pain. We're in a period where apartheid still happens. Slavery still happens. And these are things that I've never met any people who are like, that's what I want. I want my government to go out and destroy the climate, harm people. That's not what I want. But people are like, I do want you to keep me safe. Mm -hmm. And I do want to have a place to be. 
how can we get there? So the big question I have is, if what we are doing is not working, how do we together change to something else? And how do we do it in a way that connects us because our problems are global? Yeah. So how do we get into a sense of global community that is answering those problems? Do you have an answer? You know I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is why, you know, I think that we are in this really magical moment of mm. organizing and social media. You know, social media has a lot of drawbacks. But I think one of the things that we're seeing in this moment is it has the great benefit of allowing us to be in direct communication mm -hmm. and this, thus direct emotional responsibility for so much more than we ever had to be before. But that also shows us that we're in patterns that are larger than my town, my school, yeah. my community. I'm like, oh, I'm in a global pattern. I'm not the only person who feels oppressed inside my nation. I'm in a pattern of people who feel that way. If we all connect, what can we practice that we're learning from other places, yeah. right? And for me, I really look, I remember this as things were arising in Ferguson mm -hmm. and being like, oh, how do we handle what's happening in Ferguson? How do we handle the need for black life to matter? And I remember turning and looking at Palestinians and them sending us wisdom mm -hmm. and being like, oh, we're, we're facing some similar struggles and we're not the only ones. There's people all over the world who are facing these struggles. Right now, the climate crisis is impacting anyone who lives near the water already. So there's communities that are already figuring out how do we yeah. move? We're not gonna be the first to figure that out. I come from a politic that we're never the first ones to try to face the problem. And we're, we're never not, the first and, and we will not, not the be the last. We're not the last. Our job yeah. is to move it along. And there's a humility. Yeah. I, this is not the answer that anyone wants, but there's a deep humility of being able to say, we don't know. Yeah. And I think that as Americans, we almost never say that. Our, our internal empire is always so strong mm. that we're like, we know what to do and we're gonna tell everyone else what to do. I'm like, what if we don't? Yeah. What if we are failing at democracy and we can't export that to anyone else? What if we have to learn about it from others? I am holding um, space for what you just shared. Thank you. And on this question, the fractal comes back a lot. Yeah. And I think this gap between what a government does and what people want in so many ways being so large is also this loop of an opportunity yeah. where sometimes what needs to change is us yes. in okay. order for the systems that we produce <laughs> yeah. to change. Yeah. But we also need the systems to change so that we can change. And, and it's, it's a crisis. It's yeah. Urgent. So it's, it's this Mobius strip mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of like parallel change is required. That's right. And it's not just demanding you be different no. and live by these values. Yeah. It's it's expecting myself to do the same, That's right. to be and embody these values. That's right. And I think on the citizen front, I'm thinking a lot about what it means to be satisfied in the experience yes. of citizening. Yes. Like, how do we want to feel? That's right. right? I, know what it's, I know how I don't want to feel. I don't <laughs> want to feel familiar with that. frustrated and angry <laughs> and unheard uh, yes. and um, tense. I want my shoulders to drop. Yeah. I want to feel heard. Yeah. I want to feel belonging. Yes. I, I, I want to feel like other people see me and that I'm not afraid to see them. Mm. I don't want to feel afraid at all. I want to feel yeah. trust. Yeah. And so if we can articulate that yeah. and give voice to that, not just who do you want to be elected or what policy do you want to shift, but what's the experience of being together yeah. that you want to be a part of? Yes. And then design from that. That's a good idea. Mm. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I love that. And, yeah. and peace, this satisfaction piece to me too, I think we've gone through so many cycles of being dissatisfied yeah. and not being able to create the changes we wanted so that it becomes normal, right? It becomes like, oh, that's just what it is to mm -hmm. be. That's just what it is. I'm like, that's what it has been. And that's because we're living inside the imagination of people who did not benefit in any way from us changing things, right? Yeah. So to me, part of the satisfaction is also saying, I get to imagine, mm -hmm. and you get to imagine, and you get to imagine, and disabled people get oh, to imagine, yeah. indigenous people get to imagine, <laughs> you especially. Yes, of Nice course. hats, everybody. everybody. And whoever's everybody. watching this, also, you get to imagine, like imagine, it would be so satisfying yeah. to me to say, I imagine a world in which the children that I love are safe, and I can make that happen? Yeah. Oh, that's so simple, but it's so what I want there's an expansion possible here. Mm -hmm. And you know, the practice of citizening mm -hmm. and belonging and 
mutual care for each other. I uh, I think our muscles have atrophied a bit, <laughs> but yep. it's never too late. I'm like, wait, practices. <laughs> I wrote that down. <laughs> How do we continue to practice? Okay, I have one main thought I'll come okay. to. Okay? okay, I like the countdown. <laughs> so I think it's all wrapped up in this ball of care and repair. Mm. I think really what it is is care and repair. If we are in a practice where when things go awry, we know we can repair them and we think about repair and we have mediation and we have facilitators who are like, oh, my job is to bring some repair into the circumstance. I think that then means we can believe it when people say they care mm. and offer care to us. So, you know, I think we're living on an open wound right now. You know, I'm critical of the United States because we were founded through a genocidal colonial act and we never actually repaired it. Yeah. And then we kept building on top of it with more harm. I'm here because of harmful acts. And we kept building and building on top of it and we never repaired. Mm. And so without that repair, now it's normal to live in an extremely violent, extremely unjust world, because that's what we created. That's what was founded, yeah. right? So I think we need deep repair. And then I can believe oh, this place actually cares about my existence. And then care is built into our society, health care, <laughs> educational care, yeah. like care for how people live and die, um, care for how people feel. I'm like, I don't want to feel like you're just manipulating me with acts of care. Mm -hmm. I want to feel like you really see me from birth to death as something that belongs to you and you belong to me. Yeah. And if things go awry, I will repair them. And I, I can care for you. And you can believe me because I show you in my actions, not just in my speeches every yeah. four years, but in everyday actions, you see my care. So you're practicing care. You're practicing care. Yeah. And I'm a facilitator. So to me, it's like facilitation is the way you care for a group. Mm -hmm. I would rather elect facilitators in chief. I would rather have yes. facilitators running every town. Yeah. I'm like, I'm tired of pontification. Mm -hmm. I want people who care and who know how to hold people with care. I, I really feel that. And mm -hmm. I think there's a mathematical obviousness to the fact that our problems are too big mm -hmm. for one leader mm -hmm. to solve. Say it. We need all of our talents, mm -hmm. all of our experiences, all of our failures to be brought to bear yeah. on our problems and our opportunities. Yes. We need a, a facilitation, a facilitator, a way to bring all this together and coordinate it That's right. so that we can unlock this greater strength that we have yes. only together. Yes. And the other path is predictably unsatisfactory. We're never going to get there. We're not going to get there. We're not going to have, I think the orgasmic luring. yes, right? <laughs> orgasmic yes. Orgasmic yes. I'm like, democracy, a democratic place should be yeah. an orgasmic yes, mm. where you're like, I can go out and say what I want and we can co-create that. That to me is what, I think that's what the intention was yeah. once. I think that's what it needs to be now. I love the idea that we get to create it through our yeah. practices now. I want to, I want to close this on the practice of imagination okay. and some of the acknowledgement you have brought up. Mm. And one of the ways I categorize where we are is, is holding two truths at the same time. Yep. Democracy is dying. Mm. It is in crisis. Mm -hmm. The version we've inherited, some mm. of it needs to die. Yeah. It was not designed for all of us. It is not fit for the current circumstance mm. as implemented. Mm. We can acknowledge that end. And we need to have ceremony around that. Mm -hmm. And we can acknowledge the new democracies that are being born. Mm -hmm. The new practices, the citizens' assemblies, the new polling methodologies, the direct democracies, the deliberative democracies, the community-operated gardens that are giving us ways to see each other, mm -hmm. care for each other, and practice citizening together. And so we have to have a funeral Oof. and a baby shower. That's right. At the same time. I really love this. And the only thing I would add to it, Please. right? Because I keep thinking about how there's not one way. Mm -hmm. And I think as humans, we're supposed to let go of the idea that there's one way. Yeah. I think we need to have many funerals mm. and many babies born, right? So there's yes. a lot to grieve and only you know which part of the grief you're carrying, but yeah. everyone's got a part of it. And if you all get to lay it in the ground and then we all show up for each other, I'm gonna show up for yours, you show up for mine. Mm -hmm. And then we all get to doula the next world into being. Yes. I mean, it's a really great job. I don't know if you've ever been at a birth, but can you imagine mm. birthing a world we wanted to live in and that wanted us there? Yes. Let's go, let's do let's that. Let's go and then let's tell that story yes. so we can live that story. Let's do it. I'm mm. in. I'm in with you. <laughs>
Adrienne. Bye, Cindy.